and then use their their uh, their uh, interface to go through and make the corrections, move points around, create polygons, and uncertainties or whatnot. Um, within R, it's a little more complicated. You can write a simple little R script. I'll go through and then georeference all the data within your thing. What happened? Blow up again. Like I was saying, if, so where you might want to do something like this is if you're processing a really large batch of data, you know, let's say tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of records, and you want to go through and you just want to do a first pass georeferencing and get the results back from, from Geolocate and use that to further refine the kind of data that you might be sending off to other users. And so we actually, the, the reason we use this is we actually use this in our fishnet project so that we pre-geo-reference pre stuff before we even uploaded it to our collaborative geo-referencing system. And that was just so we would have an idea of what the results would be once they were in the system, so we could end up uploading data to start off with that we knew would geo-reference well. So we identify records that have higher, higher scores associated with them and, and upload those to the portal first. And that makes it a lot easier to get started because you can do the easy stuff first and then come back and focus on some of the harder data. So application services, I won't actually go into the detail of how these things work, but I'll show you some examples of them. And so this is the idea is you can take everything that's within the, the Geolocate web application, and you can take that entire application and embed it inside of another web application. And so this makes it very easy to interop with it, inter interoperate with Geolocate and get all the goodness that it offers. So one example would be the Arctos project, which is a, another specimen database and within Arctos. They have a geolocate button, you can click on that, up pops up a little window, you make your adjustments to it, you click on the save button and it automatically saves the results back to your application. Symbiota uses the exact same interface where you can identify records within Symbiota, you click the geolocate button, and you also are presented with a map showing the results and you can make your adjustments, create your polygons, edit your points, whatever, and save the results back to the parent application. Location. Since all of that really runs by URLs, as Deb was talking about, where she was, you know, just creating a URL, sending it to one of the specialized services, our entire web application can run off of your URLs as well. So just by crafting a, a URL in a special kind of way and giving it the right parameters, you can load up a geolocate client. So what that allows you to do is, let's say within, within Excel, you can create a column that has a bunch of hyperlinks in it, and those hyperlinks could be could result from concatenation of your different locality fields. So I can now have a big spreadsheet with all my locality data, and you know, within that spreadsheet, I can have a bunch of little column hyperlink cells in here that I can then just click on. And every time I click on it, it'll open up my browser and show me the results that you locate returned for that record. I could then make my edits within that browser window. Then I'd have to copy and paste those results back into Excel using that little copy paste box at the bottom. Now I'm going to transition a little bit and talk about how we're using Geolocate within the FishNet 2 georeferencing project. So to give you guys a little bit of background, um, FishNet 2 is a global network of data collections. Right now, at the moment, there are 53 data providers. We'll probably be adding another four or five within the next week, and um, probably another 10 within the next month or so. Um, right now, there's 3.3 million lots and about 30 million specimens. Good news is about 50% of that data is already georeferenced, so we do have some starting data that we can go ahead and work with. But the goal of this project is to approach 100% georeferencing and expand the network to about 4 million lots. 
Now when I say 100% georeference, that does not mean every single record is going to end up with the latitude and longitude. It means someone will have looked at every single record and made a decision whether or not a latitude and longitude could be determined. So every record will be evaluated, or at least the, the records that are ungeo-referenced will be evaluated, and a determination will be made as to whether or not it could have been geo-referenced. Um, so the way it works right now, we have 12 partner institutions that are all PIs on the project. Each institution has a dedicated uh, geo-referencing technician that is responsible for geo-referencing a particular region of the world. And so our preliminary assignments, at least what we proposed in, in, in the proposal, was to divide up the world into a number of regions and we assign those regions to various institutions. We're trying to stick to this, but we have, we've already deviated from it a little bit based upon preferences and experiences of different technicians. Um, and we also, pretty much everyone who's joined the project, we've started them off with a small data set within the US so that they can get familiar with the system and work with a data set that's going to be relatively easy. As I was on earlier, working with stuff in Asia, Mexico seems to be really tough just because there's so many repetitive place names in, in some of these countries that it becomes a very difficult process for georeferencing. Oops. Um, just to give you an idea, like I was saying, there's about four million, two, two of the four million records total that will need to be georeferenced. That's about 290,000 locality records. Now that's actually a little higher than we had proposed. When we originally wrote the proposal, our estimates were that there were about 250,000 unique collecting events within FishNet. So we've already gotten more data than we'll probably be able to georeference. But right now we seem to be on schedule, so maybe we'll be able to, to knock all of that out. So if we look at our workflow, we wanted to create a workflow that was very reproducible. As we get new data in, we could go through and just send it down this automated pipeline minimal amount of, of messing around. Um, there are little changes to this and to, to what we actually do, but we standardize on using R as, as the primary means for getting data, manipulating data, doing the first batch of cleanup, and getting things into an internal database. Once they're within that internal database, then the project manager on the project goes through and does some final data cleaning and exports out these data sets that then get uploaded into the collaborative georeferencing portal. And then once they're uploaded into the portal, they're processed, they get georeferenced, corrected, and then we start reviewing the results using both Geolocate as well as some GIS software. And then ultimately, near the end of the project, we start repatriating data back to um, providers. Just a little bit about data repatriation. We have no guarantee that every provider is going to take back the data. So within FishNet, we will continue, we will actually be serving records that have been georeferenced that may not exist within those provider databases. That way, the results of this work don't just disappear you know, at the end of the project, even though the parent institution may have not accepted the data yet. But in those situations, we'll make sure that it's clear to the end users of FishNet that they know that the data was georeferenced and hasn't been accepted by that institution yet, or it's not coming from the institution, but it's coming from this project instead. So how are we representing uncertainty? And so this goes back to my point of, of polygons versus uncertainty radius. So uncertainty radius is the most common method used by a lot of the other big georeferencing projects. The HerpNet project used the uncertainty radius method, the MAML project used the uncertainty radius, and so did the, uh, the, the big bird georeferencing project. Well, so if we look at data right now that's been georeferenced within our project, and so this, this is all plotted against the, the hydrologic unit uh, map. And so we can see all these little green dots are the results of our georeferencing, everything that we've corrected thus far. And then these circles are the uncertainty radius. Some of them look a little wide because it's just the projection as they get projected onto this, this style of map. But they are, you know, solid circles. Um, and so if you notice, some of these uncertainties span multiple watersheds. And that may not be a big deal in some cases. In some cases, that can be a very big deal. But then if you look at the polygons, oftentimes the polygons fall right within a nice little watershed, or there, there's just a lot less uncertainty associated with these polygons. And you can see here, someone spent a lot of time creating a really nice <coughs> polygon. So it gives us a lot more certainty and allows us to use the data in a lot more ways just by spending a little bit of effort to create these polygons. There is a little bit more effort, and even having crude polygons like these over here where they're a little more square or whatever, is a lot better 
better than having none at all. And even after the fact, we could go through it in some GIS, clean these up and make them more refined in a much more automatic fashion. Just the fact that we have that first polygon to begin with. So this is a very new project. It was just funded this past year. We had our first year referencing training meeting on, I guess, January 9th and 10th here at KU, or the 10th and 11th. And on the 11th, we actually started doing some georeferencing for the project, and so it's been running for about 48 days. And here you can see where we are in the project. All of these green dots indicate all the records that have been verified, corrected, and georeferenced to date. And you can actually see the workload, is, you know, how much work everyone's getting done per day. You can't see the scale over here, but at the top, I believe it's about 800 records would be the maximum that's been done in a single day. And we don't have all 12 technicians available yet. So I think up to about right here, we only had 10 technicians, and in the past two weeks, I think we got our last technician. So you can see it's slowly increasing um, productivity. But if you look at this, we're still well on our way to be within the, to, to meet all the, the goals that we set forth within the project. And then finally, I'd like to acknowledge all the people who've worked on the Geolocate project, as well as all the collaborators we've worked with over the years, and then all the people within the FishNet2 project all the technicians who are working uh, diligently to georeference all this data. I'm glad to take any questions. Thank you.